Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. It's Friday, happy Friday everyone. It's definitely gonna be a good day for me because I am back in operating rooms again today. We got a special problem. Today we have a C-arm table and the motor seems to be struggling a little irregularly. And uh, this is a, a table that uses electric motors, so it doesn't use hydraulics. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got. This is a good one. All right, here you go. You can see that this is a procedural room and this is a vascular clinic. And this table right here, you can see that it's got linear rails right here. And these rails are almost completely dry, it feels. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, they're dry. Uh, the grease on my hands is from the other side. And let's see, we got, oh, this, okay, so this is good grease right here. This one here is a good grease because it's very slippery, you know? The grease that's on my gloves, if you can tell, it's making my gloves stick to themselves. Uh, that is not good grease. Some interesting things about this table. Uh, let's see, what model is this? I don't even know what model this is. Uh, oh, okay. So this is a uh, Dre Deary Delphi CF. There we go. That's what it is. So it's a Dre table. Um, overall, this is a really well built table. Really well built. Look at those linear rails. This is an absolute beast. Linear rails right here, right here, right here, right here. Linear rails can handle a huge amount of uh, weight, but normally that weight is facing this way. But the specialty about linear rails is that they got bearing sides here, here, here. It's got multiple bearing sides, so they're really good, the square rails, at handling uh, sideways forces. So here we are. It's got beefy, beefy linear rails. You can see we've got um, a gear to gear system right here. That's really odd. You would almost expect a chain or something like that. But what they did is they did they do a transverse mounted uh, motor. So the motor is mounted this way, gear to gear. And then up here is a helical gear. And it, oh yeah, rack and pinion. You can see right there, it's got a, it's a, got a pinion gear. So that, what is the pinion gear for? I don't even know. Um, I'll see it in a minute. I got grease all over my hands. Those little wheels, like that wheel right there. And let's see, I had another one over here. There's one down there. See those little micro switches? That micro switch is a calibration. And what it is, is there's a, a groove that's cut into it, so it's like a cam. And the micro switch will ride in the cam groove, and then when it reaches the side, the gear rotates until it hits the bump, and then it knows that it's at its limit. So it's a limit switch. Take a look right there. This is a uh, linear rod end cap, and you can see right there that there is definitely some moisture getting in here because of the corrosion. And I believe that the moisture is part of the problem. So let's go over here and I'll show you guys what I really think is going on. So we have evidence of moisture intrusion right here. You can see it right there. I've got evidence of some moisture intrusion right here on the back side of the motor. And always look at flat surfaces. So down here at the base, you can see that there is some evidence of moisture getting in and sitting down there too because of the corrosion and the scale the deposits that are left on the surface. So right here we have a down firing motor which is probably on a gear to gear to this Acme screw right here and this Acme screw is the one that's raising or lowering this table. Well here's the problem I believe. See how my glove is sticking to it? That is the stickiest grease I have ever seen it's not necessarily slippery, but it's really, really sticky. So this right here is obviously gonna have to get cleaned up. I have no idea what liquids have spilled in from the top, but whatever liquids have gotten down inside here, um, it's, it's obviously corroded the motor, 
We have to worry about what moisture has gotten inside the motor right there. It's not completely sealed. But for right now, this Acme screw, I'm going to clean up as much of this old grease as possible. And I'm going to replace it with a high molly grease. So a high torque grease that you would normally use on a linear actuator and uh, or a, like a gear grease. So here you go. Not really that good. These over here, this is definitely way slipper. Yeah, definitely much, much slipper. My glove doesn't want to stick to it at all. It's, it's tacky, but not to the point where it's crazy. And then let's see up here. What about on this guy? Yeah. Okay, so on that rack and pinion, it's slippery. So for whatever reason, this grease right here, it obviously has all the wear and tear on this uh, Acme screw. And you can see some remnants of the grease right here. So see that lighter color? That's the original color of the grease. Now grease does wear out. That's much, much, much more slippery. The stuff that I took off near the wiper, the wiper is that seal that's right in front of um, your Acme nut right there. That lighter colored grease is much more slippery. Oh yeah. But the stuff that's down further on the screw, that's a no-go. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so what I've got to do is clean off the grease. Um, I'm going to inspect this motor. Uh, the motor's working extra hard because if this grease right here is not doing its job, it's also clogging up what is probably a ball nut right here. Actually, is it? No, it's, it's just a, a thread. It's just a thread on that guy which we could change it out. You see right there, we got those. We can change out that guy there. Would probably require some sort of hoist to hold this guy up. Um, that would not be cool, because this guy, you can tell, look at this casting. This is incredibly heavy. This is a very well-made table. I like that the brake feet, it's the brake feet right here. I don't know if they're hydraulic or not. I, I don't see any hydraulics really in the machine so far, but uh, they could be just on rocker cams that rock and, and then put them down. Um, reasonably large caster wheels. I just wish it had four-way steer. So you see those ones down there, do not steer. They are um, straight casters only. So getting this long table moving around a room is sometimes a little bit of a pain. Also, one of the other things I've noticed is this controller right here. Uh, you can see that it's got a damaged button and also this little joystick right here uh, I can tell that that guy probably can get damaged as well so I'm gonna take a look and see if I can get a replacement button I almost certainly can now these type of tables right here they have a carbon composite carbon fiber and um, that's so that it is radiolucent which means the x-rays could penetrate through the table without generating any artifacts on your x-ray so it's a very special table, and that tabletop right there is probably twenty thousand dollars. I bet. Just that's the tabletop, not not the chassis. I'm just, I'm just talking this this piece of what appears to be plastic right here. This black plastic is probably probably sixteen to twenty thousand dollars. I bet it's, it's it's probably incredibly expensive. But uh, it's a very special table, and it's used in conjunction with the C arm. They will use them for all types of surgeries. Um, this one here, like I said, is vascular. But uh, I've seen these at a variety of different stores and different places. But uh, it's a good table, really solid table. And I believe that this one here is probably seven or eight years old, maybe older. But uh, it's a good, it's a good setup. Easy to maintain, I would say. I mean, all the fasteners are readily and easily accessible. The shrouds come off, um, so they're suspended by these brackets right here, which, again, those, those brackets are super easy to get to. See? 
and every single layer of shroud is hung independently. So this layer right here is screwed in and fastened from the sides. You can see I've got the shrouds right here. <clears throat> These shrouds are extremely heavy duty, very thick metal, all short Phillips head screws. So you can see right here, there's, there's two fasteners right here, right here that holds the clamshell together. And then there's two suspension screws right here and right here. And those guys go right here. So those two are screwed down. And then up under this guy, you can see the other two. There's one, and there's one. And then this guy has got its own. So you take these guys off, then you'll raise it up. Now you can get to the inner two. You drop the inner four, and then that shroud comes down. And when that guy comes down, now you have access to these and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, it's a good table. Interesting. Now, I'm, I'm kind of curious because these motors are not very large, but anyway, that's the problem. Let's, let's go ahead and take a look and see how it operates. All right, here, let's get this strap out of the way. Okay, here we go. So that linear, um, that Acme screw right there, you can see it. It's going in and out of a nut that's right here. And that is what raises and lowers the table. So it pushes on this side. And because it's got linear rails on this side, they keep it linear, which means it's going straight, straight up and down. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay. So that's table tilt. Look at that beast. So it has a red, like synthetic grease on there. Okay. Yeah, you can see it's like a synthetic grease. And let's try this one. All right. And let's see if I can get a camera open there. Here's the calibration wheel right there that calibrates uh, center. I can't get that wheel to do anything because I don't know what function it is. Here's this one right here. Well, it's not doing anything. Um, I'll have to do some more digging. You can see it's it's a micro switch based system. Very simple. And uh, I gotta figure out what function those guys belong to. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to do some more digging. First time I've ever torn one of these apart. What a beast. So, guys, there you have it. Uh, that is a DRE. C arm table or X ray table, and uh, it, it seems to be a good table. It just needs periodic love, just like anything else in life. And uh, I'm I'm really actually surprised by the gear to gear uh, powertrain. That is just feisty. I wonder what the lift capabilities on that are on this guy. I bet you it's like 600 pounds, five 600 pounds. It's going to be really high. But uh, anyway, guys, hope you all have a wonderful Friday. Thanks for watching.